Previously, we had discussed how we got from the solution on the left that was the Boolean result to the solution on the right via the process of realigning some geometry. I'm going to press Control N and we're just going to make a new file and we're going to see how much worse we can make that situation. So I'm going to press Q and under Mesh Tools, we're just going to activate SphereCast and we're just going to look at it in front view. I'm going to jump over to Circle, 32 rounds of Howdy Doody, have fun solving me. And let's activate dots and with our frontal dot started from view we're just going to draw a circle and bring it in press j to turn it into a join object from here click to apply and let's just click on this front face and jump off of a dot and we'll bring that in actually my mistake we were approaching this all wrong i want to look at this from the side first and we want to cut in our first trouble area I was looking at it, I was like, this is going to be too easy. I'm missing a step. So let's also jump off from the inside of this area and bring it back out. Let's press B to bevel. Let's press Alt V E in order to get it to EVHQ. And let's bring this cut in. And as I'm cutting, I can't help but think about what the solving process is going to be like. So it's almost causing some deviations to my result compared to if I was just doing my random work and just choosing one at random to go ahead and convert. So that already, if we alt V look at the wireframe, that's already going to be a fun time converting because we see that this is a lot simpler than what we're looking at the, on the outside. So there's going to have to be a degree of simplification as we get from here to here with our units. But let's actually up the ante. So I'm going to bring out a circle right here and we're going to connect it into the wedge and cut in, extrude it out, press J, turn it into a join. And that's almost bad enough. Let's give it enough room to not kill us today, but just not enough in order to make it uncomfortable as possible. Let's also do our usual jump offs with this area, creating some subsequent detail. Not able to use the reverse bevel today, but or actually I am because I'm in 2.91, but if I was in 3.0, that wouldn't be able to be the case. If we press Alt X and X, we can go ahead and mirror this. And I think we're ready to begin. In fact, uh, one more fun area we can create is jumping off of maybe this point. And let's just cut something like that. We'll pause it and just grab the dot and expand it. And let's just put a little Mickey Mouse in there. So. This is enough to give every, anyone nightmares, right? Whenever it comes to Boolean solving. So let's solve it with confidence. I've done a couple of videos now where we've talked about the basic tools and the workflows that it's going to entail. So now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So visual geometry to mesh, alt X, and we're just going to jump over to bisect. I'm going to bisect it on the X and the Z, ending the operation, giving us just this. And that's all I need. So. Let's just solve all of these to their nearest points. Just begin bringing some sanity to this. And we see that we don't have a lot of breathing room, so we're going to have to be really, um, I don't know, smart, except the solution at the end, I guarantee you, will be anything but smart. So we'll grab these two points, J to lightning bolt, J to lightning bolt. And so far, so good. We're just looking to make sure that we have this loop able to go around. We're going to have to make a hard decision. Let's just get rid of that, giving us a loop that goes all the way around. The flow begins to get a little wayward here because of the initial sphere. So I'm just going to bring up knife. And the thing about me and tools is, um, you know, I always fall back to vanilla because the vanilla tools are truly what inspires us. I love them. And also I want them to always be at their best. So I'm just checking to make sure that these things are as good as I remember them because all our work aims to do is just slightly deviate from the course that these tools set in just ways that are a little bit more advantageous to what we're going for at the time. But, you know, nothing can compare with what Vanilla Blender has to offer. So, you know, a lot of the tools you see me using are just hot vanilla, the best vanilla. So for this area, let's compromise it. I know, regrettable but we do want to alleviate so we can have a flow that jumps across to the other side. Let's grab these two points, J, these two points, J, and you know, we're missing like every other point here, you know, but we are going to 
try a simplification in multiple areas and maybe it won't come back to haunt us later like so where basically this area is now simplified to have a flow that we can begin working around to the other side so instead of using Babel to space things out we're gonna have to do these things manually for example this one is such a near miss to this one so I'm gonna grab this edge and normally I would bevel space that and push it down but I can't do that instead I'm gonna have to use circle select and grab these right click and subdivide in order to place an edge directly down the middle sort of SY0 to flatten them we also have a uh, hops operation for that for flattening geometry but it's just quicker to just press the classics so Let's go ahead and add a loop here and we're just going to jump all the way there and just subdivide and add a loop. We'll grab this loop, press control shift B to make that two and connection, connection. We've made a connection. And as we get these connections, the pieces will start to come together. This one, I'm just going to quantify it and just end that flow. So we don't have to talk about it anymore. This area is getting quite interesting. Let's also simplify it a little bit more as we go because we can add a loop here and that will allow us to end this area. And then we can add a loop to basically make this connection. But we should probably have some sort of perimeter protection going. You know my rules whenever it comes to perimeter protection. There's one thing you can expect from my geometry is I will protect your perimeter no matter what. <laughs> you might not even like the rest of the model, but you will have some protective parameters. Just kidding, a little perimeter humor there. That's what we do in a perimeter field. So I'm just gonna slide this geometry around and let's make a connection. And this area is not a quad and that area is also not a quad. You know, we're just making not quads and just dissolving and hoping we can force a flow to go. And this area just has to end at a triangle, but we'll talk about that later. So I purposely wanted to do a situation like this where we'd be able to solve that lickety split like nothing, but when it comes to getting all the way up in here, it's gonna just get weird. And I bet I made the same mistake. Oh my God, I did. So in the notes and the practice of this, I'm actually supposed to make this cylinder connect all the way into the back so I don't have to do a solve on this stuff. But instead today, we get to do a solve on even trickier geometry. So I'm gonna control shift tab and jump over to vertex. And if you're unable to follow what's going on, you know, the keystrokes have failed me, but there's previous videos where I try to go over this in depth. Like the goal is to eventually get to full speed where I'm no longer talking about tool rigmarole and we can begin talking about, you know, that good stuff, the stuff that makes it fun to record. And it's not, hey, I press E here, or hey, I'm pressing J. You know, that's the job of this box in the bottom of the window. So let's make some connections. You know, that's us. We're just geometry matchmakers. And if we really wanted to be funny, we could have given different resolutions to the cylinders. Uh, I had some alternative examples planned, one all about circles and just making circles and circles over and over repetitively, and then topologically keeping it all in check. But I didn't know if it would uh, make me seem like a weirdo or if it would actually get a point across. So with this area, I can just tell you subdivision isn't going to play that. I mean, we could let it try to play that, but, you know, um, got to do quality content here. So let's actually prepare it for subdivision while we're in here because, you know me, I don't like to do it twice. So this area is going to receive a reinforcement. And we can't slide it because this geometry is just so uneven, but we can set up a redirect right here. And what we need before this redirect is a loop that's actually going down it as well. Just really looking at this and trying to make some split second decisions. Like, do I want to place an edge on the width of the cylinder? Because these sort of things is going to compromise the subdivision, but you know, sometimes you can get away with it. In fact, I've been, Kind of getting away with it lately i mean if you think that's something that subdivision isn't going to play with let's let's put a little subdivision on it just to see what we're about to be dealing with 
So this bug with subdivision, it's a tricky one. You know, we still got our eye on it. Every time I try to um, take pride, it makes it fucking full of me. Um, it's like a saying we have internally. I'm like, ooh, let's not take victory laps ever, guys, because there's always some random guy who's um, gonna have an issue every time. So never a victory lap, ever. Never, ever pat yourself on the back around here. You know, you can, maybe in secret, but never publicly. It's just too easy to fail, so gotta remain humble at all times. So we're just gonna continue adding loops and working our way across this geometry, wondering where my edge loop is showing up when I press Shift R. And, you know, just giving this area some positive reinforcement. So when we do add subdivision to it, and also we want to turn off auto smooth for now we see that we actually get something like this which simplicity is just great let's also grab these edges and you know if we wanted to do it the blender way let's just mess up bevel right let's just press Control b roll the wheel once press p and every time we press bevel it's going to do that it's going to be just like that on the profile which I personally don't like, but I feel like um, it's intended and, you know, I, I'm just, what do I know? You know, I'm just a guy. So we don't want to look at subdivision edit mode. You know, every time you do it, God cries. So just turn that off. Let's press G, Y and get these to match up when you hold control. Let's press J, form a connection. We got a connection there. We got a connection, got a connection. and. You probably notice that I'm not even having to use uh, topo display, and that's because, you know, I don't need it. Um, really, the goal is to solve this for subdivision at this point. You know, at first we were being uh, topo inwards, uh, trying to make it all quads, but now we're just trying to survive because, you know, um, the the situations are about to get more intense. In fact, this one's a pretty good one. Um, I want to see users going at geometry like this just really hitting these areas and reinforcing them, you know, really just telling your geometry positive things so that way it grows up big and strong. Otherwise, they will go delinquent and end up a try in a corner somewhere and you'll just wonder how did that happen to my Geo? So let's just select these two and merge at last, at last, at last. Let's uh, add a loop there, place a loop here, slide these two. Nice to meet you. Select these two. Pleasure to meet as well. Let's grab. This area is kind of mysterious. Look at it on the outside. We want to take this area kind of seriously. I'm just kind of joking here. And this is what our subdivision solve is looking like as we're working. So I don't even want to look at subdivision. And we need auto smooth or else the geometry is just going to look just terrible. So back at them. You know, there's no time for us to stop and take victory laps. There's only geometry correction time. I've been in geometry correction mode like the last couple of days where I've just been waking up and, you know, not eating breakfast and just destroying geometry. Because it's all about practice. You know, the more you practice, the better you get. So, I mean, even if you're watching this video, you know, leave this video and go practice you'll do yourself a favor, but watching me isn't gonna improve you. Tr trying it may improve you, but you know, only pressing Control T and Alt J for these um, very simple areas, like let's try that again, Control T, Alt J, it's a beauty. Just one of those Blender classics. Like I said, Blender don't need us. Well, maybe a little bit. They do have some problems. I hate how smooth, auto smooth, they're just in totally different locations. I will always complain about that till the end of time. But, you know, I'm so over it. I mean, come on, we've made like multiple sharpeners, so it doesn't matter about smoothing anymore. But I don't know. When it comes to doing a beginner tutorial, that's like the first thing that I feel I have to mention is hey, guys these smooth things that are completely relationship connected with each other are in Greece and France and in Hawaii and I don't know why I mean 
anyways, I'm getting sidetracked. So this is what our corner is looking like. And the real question is, what is this going to look like whenever we subdivide it? And also, what are we going to do with this big end gun? We're just going to turn one of them into a quad and one of them into a tri. And like I said, our goal isn't to turn this into perfect topology. The goal is to make it into topology that's going to survive being subdivided and look pretty nice. Because, you know, when it comes to subdivision, you can just apply a level and it's all good. I mean, you may have to go in and reduce some loops because subdivision just adds so much extra geometry. We were actually having a meeting earlier just talking about subdivision and it was like, I love subdivision so much, but one loop becomes four and four becomes eight. And dang it, that's just too many dang loops for an area. You know, it's like cool for a moment and it's like, wait, you know, like a fingernail. I was reading in this book one time that when you model a fingernail on a character and add four levels of subdivision, it goes up to like, I think a million or something. I don't remember, but I'm probably talking out of my butt, but it was something astronomical. I was like, oh snap, we gotta stop modeling fingernails on characters um, because it's out of control. But listen to me, I'm being a topo um, in word again. Uh, either one anyways so how are we going to get this area to flow we have two 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 we could start simplifying and making things fit but if you watch my videos a while it's not my style also i was about to merge these two that's also not my style when you make a geometric mistake on that level um it can come back to haunt you however Let's say we wanted to force a flow here because we're going to need this area to survive subdivision. And this area, does it even need to exist? Probably. I mean, it's really sparse without it. I was about to um, annihilate an area, but we won't do that yet. Instead, we're just going to grab this area and just press Control B to just bevel this, which is going to come out a little weird, but, you know, we know that it's weird. We can we can get in and manage that weirdness, but always gotta check for doubles, especially when you're being weird. We're gonna just turn that into a diamond and use a quad here to just basically perform a big redirect. We could do that with some of the areas that we were reducing, but it's really not time for that yet because the subdivisions down here aren't capable. So how do we wanna do this? We can party here party here and our night of party and over however we still have to solve this area so we don't want to interfere with our edge that's going to be protecting the parameters so we could just place two tries here and then turn that into a quad like so and you know this this redirect is absolutely useless we'll never need to add additional geometry there but it gets tough you have to make some really hard topological decisions. And that's like the point of these videos is to show you that, you know, there's the, the poly count gurus will tell you the perfect answer. There's this thread where they talk about how you model them shapes is the greatest thread ever, but I don't think it exists anymore. But that thread was the time I was so tuned into it. And we could probably get things to run a little clean around here but really just wanting to protect the perimeter the perimeter must be protected at all costs i was looking at some of my previous results and while they came out looking all right um i did let the perimeter get attacked so can't be letting that happen as far as these areas go i'm just going to turn that into a quad and we could do the same over here just turn that into a quad and press M, merge at last, and this is all a quad. This area, what are we gonna do? Do we wanna jump all the way here? Do we want this? This area holds the integrity, so we could slide here and end this, which would sacrifice just a little bit. And then the OCD of me as an artist that makes me different from a freaking algorithm will make me slide that area just so we can kind of get something a little bit better. So, so far, so, so quad. You know, not the best, but we're surviving is the goal. Like I said, this one's like a horror story. Our goal is to survive the geometry that we're laying forth because it could easily overwhelm you and destroy you. 
So I probably sound like a lunatic, but I don't know. This is stuff I think about whenever I'm solving. I do a lot of solving. Like I said, I play a lot of Tetris, and so when I get bored of Tetris, then I'm solving some Geo, and Geo solving gets boring. I mean, there's some examples I haven't got to yet, but yeah, I want to get that topology you see on car engines, guys. All right, so let's connect these two points, and we're going to get, it's going to get a little hairy, but Diamond quad is a reduction technique, so you can always use it whenever you have to reduce your geometry. You can just take two areas adjacent to each other and just like that redirect it and solve and just end that whole discussion. I mean, geometry can be very complicated, but with some basic rules, basically those old memes that I make fun of, um, you know, they do have a place. And that is in your memories, not in your hard drive. Because, I mean, how often are you modeling and bringing up topology reference? Um, I wouldn't do that. So, <laughs> just to be inspired on topology. I mean, it's like the whole discussion of what does your topology look like? What does it matter? Look at my shape. Look at my result. My result is flawless. No, I'm kidding. But... Let's diamond quad that. I mean, it's kind of ugly, but it's an easy quad. You got two tries next to each other. What are you going to do? Take the shot. Take the shot. So let's see how we did. I am going to save the file powered by power save. We'll call this topo solve spherical. And this is spherical number zero two, meaning there's three before this. And let's just turn on uh, poly. And these are all the areas that, well, the reds are the ones that I must solve because if we just let subdivision solve it, it won't it won't look pretty. So I'm always willing to um, deal with end guns myself. And so there's a there's a question here, a philosophical question. First of all, do we have enough reinforcement on the cylinder happening with this transition? Uh, I would venture to say no. Let's slide this around a little bit. And maybe something like that to really um, hold that area. And this edge that we did connect, but this area is a mess. Oh wait, yeah, it's a mess. So when it comes to working with something like this, I would actually sharpen it, which because I have seam enabled means that I can press L, L, L and talk to this thing in private. So. Privately, I must ask this match. I want a loop go all the way around. It goes all the way around over here. Won't we'll go around over here. And we see this because of a partial loop that we drew that never made it all the way around to the other side. So we add a loop SY to flatten it. And bring those to connect. And we now have a flow there. And we have a flow not here. Who's the offender? Let's press Alt H. Why are these offending areas even existing? This area doesn't have to exist. This area though is a ponderant. So we do want that to exist. So we'll just add a loop, make the connection. And how far did that loop go? Well, that loop can't go that way. Let's see, we add a loop, it goes all the way around this thing. Let's just right click subdivide to cut that loop short in its prime. And now let us press L, L, L to isolate this area. Let's look at it from the outside. You know, is that what a car mechanic would do? And this early loop that we terminated, we'll make the connection connected here. And if we wanted to make it a quad, just hit it with a loop. That, that's the thing about a try. You just hit a try with a loop and it's over. Also, this area is on the inside, so I'm hoping that's not going to do so much damage. But like I said, any loop that is added to the actual form is going to be a hard hitter. But if it's going to hit hard, it might as well reinforce the form because we'll need it. So now let us turn on mirror and let us turn on subdivision. And let's press Alt V and get out of wireframe. And we also want to remove any markings. 
and also disable auto smooth and basically this is our result so we see that this area did not get enough reinforcement so this time I am going to get my top of right I don't want quad remesher making me look bad first let's enable auto smooth so we're looking at something a little hardy hardy and how do we want to do this well I'm going to let's see we have an additional loop here as well so let's free the beast and jump it over here we're just gonna grab this area and subdivide it to create what's going to be our new loop let's slide over near the old loop let's tell the old loop that we don't need it here anymore and that we have a new loop now let's turn that into a quad we still have our flow however it's partial and we want this flow to really adhere to this particular edge because otherwise it will not flow right and J to connect we look at our flow it is perfect well it's not perfect but it'll do and we look at what we have and we see that this area isn't getting enough reinforcement so I'm going to make a controversial decision and that is to give this edge to this edge for reinforcement because having it just um, assist in the form is not going to be enough we need more of that edge so now we're back in object mode OCD I mean I'll slide loops until the end of time all right let's enable subdivision and this is what our results is looking like so far and so we see that the bottom now needs a level of um, protection which this this happens sometimes you just overlook the importance of protecting certain boundaries and those boundaries get broken and next thing you know you're apologizing to meshes so for this area let's say you have a vert and you want to make it two. well I will press Control shift B roll the wheel down to one and let's just merge these two points at last let's dissolve these two and we now have a flow happening so sometimes it is that easy however when it comes to maintaining our flow in this area we're just going to need to um, rethink where we begin reducing and mitigating our geometry so we'll keep it for now and let's just bring this up and we're just going to begin reducing it a little earlier than on the perimeter because that's just bad practice you know as we begin cleaning up our neighborhood things will start looking better and we could just place a loop in between in order to turn actually let's see i got a okay i got a quad let's see how do we want to solve this i will press j and we'll turn this back into a quad and so now we have a diamond quad a diamond quad a quad just all next to each other but our perimeter is now protected so this area could also use some improvements because having this single pole here is causing a bit of stress that just isn't needed so you can see how even after you've laid down your solution, you can continue to go back and really refine your solution to better levels because your surface is already in place. So, you know, I, whenever I talking with the team, I'm, I talk about these ideas of redoing surfaces. I'm like, I don't want to retopple a surface though. I just want to rewrite what it has going on. And so for this area, let's say we want to mitigate it. Well, we could mitigate all of this with a nice inset which may be needed for this really getting OCD with this particular surface let's relax this area a bit tab out and we're looking pretty good I mean I'm just being really OCD with it I see that I've spent a lot of time on it now so let's pull back and actually look at our handiwork. We want to make sure that there's, you know, nice, clean transitional edges happening. However, this corner 
is so naked and I see it. So we'll never stop. Let's cut this loop short using subdivide. And then we can add a loop to protect this area. And right now the result is looking something like that, a little smeary, but we can also mitigate that as well with just a little bit of reinforcement. And when it comes to terminating this, let's just bring it over here. Just putting a simple triangle there. I mean, triangles aren't so bad. They're just terminators for loops, unless you have too many of them in the wrong places. It start getting a little ugly. So let's start solving this area. You know, I don't want this um, area looking like a mess near my pole. So we'll just do a little bit of um, re-geometrizing to send this a little bit further away and because of our work we were able to add an extra loop in which will relax our solution on the inside by bringing it up with the outside and if we tab out we're looking at something like this and when it comes to subdivision i just have such high expectations of it like for example, this area isn't looking tight enough. We can make it look even tighter. And this is just one of the things with subdivision that makes me run away from subdivision. Like we, we were just talking about it earlier. I was like, you know, subdivision is so fun until it's not fun. I mean, it's still fun now because we're just running solutions like an algorithm, just seeing what works out for us best. We might slide this geo up, really tighten this corner area. And we see that we get something like that, but we want this geometry to close in a little bit to just tighten it maybe here as well. And let's look at the other corner. The other corner is actually wide open. So we're just doing a couple of strategic slides and now we're looking at something like that. So that looks a little better to me. I was um, a little obsessive with it, but also we want to get in and solve this area because we already spaced it out. doesn't matter. We can just press E and slide these areas out. And just like that, we have solved that as well. So if we look at the wireframe, we see what our result is. So the purpose of this video today was really to talk about getting around these sort of situations, at least topologically and surviving subdivision. If we turn off the wireframe, we can actually see what's looking like with the subdivision modifier on it. So every time I do it, the results are always a little bit more variable. In fact, now I'm actually curious in what solution I came to with this area. And it looks like it's barely adequate. So how can we improve that? We did reinforce this area. However, this extra point being added in here is just not going to work. Something like that works a little bit better compared to what we were just looking at. But solving such an area is always going to be a bit of a struggle just because of what's inherently involved here and the amount of geo that we have and our source geometry that we even provided it. From the moment we decided to use 32 round cylinders on this sphere, our fate was sealed. But with that, we have now survived this subdivision conversion process. And with that, I can wrap up this video. Now that we attempted to solve it by hand, let's see how quadri mesher fares. So for this mesh, I'm going to first save the file and then uh, apply all the geometry. And we will just use bisect in order to split the mesh just like before, giving us only this and we will run quadri mesher over this. So just a partial solution. And the result looks pretty good. However, we did lose our edge, so let's undo. Let's mark these as sharp and use normal splitting. And that's much better. And this is almost something we could work with. Let's take this and just mirror it using modifier and let's press control one, control two, control three. Let's turn off wireframe and see what our result looks like. So this is what three levels of subdivision and you know, it almost looks good except that it's all lumpy and looks kind of bad. Let's activate wireframe and we see that, you know, we just got too much wires for the amount of geo that we were solving. 
So I'm just going to undo until we are back where we started, which was here. And let's actually solve it with 2,500. Maybe for it only being a quarter, we need a lot less. So let's do it again. There's our new shape. Let's add a few layers of subdivision. Alt V. And this is our result with quad remesher. So if we got in and we removed the sharp markings, then we actually can see what we're looking at. And as always, the parameters are always just so compromised. However, geometrically, this could almost work, except not a single parameter was protected. But the solution does look a lot more elegant than what I was dealing with. In fact, because it was able to choose how these things came rushing in, it was able to sweep them very nicely underneath. So almost something to learn from here. Here we see an area that got reduced. However, it reduced this area down on top of a perimeter turn, which resulted in a five star pole sitting on top of a turn point. But these are small things, neither here nor there. You know, I over obsess whenever it comes to looking at this stuff. The other thing is that let's bring back the actual mesh and let's mirror it to the other side and let's talk about just surviving subdivision using just regular old modifiers. So when it comes to surviving subdivision, we can just go under modifiers and add a triangulate. And then from there, we can add a bevel. Sometimes I get asked why I add a triangulate before the subdivision. And it's because if you don't, you'll end up with something like this. So triangulate will at least hold the surface together no matter what allowing subdivision to go in and deal with this. So let's look at the wireframe again and let's also turn off optimal display so we can see what the result of applying it would look like. So this is kind of what a default blender solve would look like and we could even help it out a little bit. For example, let's toggle off subdivision and let's select this mesh, choose bevel and let's hit three in order to add basically an edge perimeter bevel we want to slide this up above the triangulate. So we end up with something like that. And then let's turn it back on. This isn't going to be the most elegant solution because we're trying to automate it. But now we have a shape that is subdivided, but it looks like this, even though we were literally just hacking this together with modifiers. So there's always a way to get a shape all the way through to subdivision. However, there's going to be some compromises and for something like this, we could actually do some things to alleviate it, like look at this in top view and jump over to knife and perform a knife operation. Probably should have disabled some modifiers, but you live and you learn. And with this loop, we will just slide it over on the Y, mitigating some of these areas that we saw that were kind of creeping up. And while we can't get this perfect, if we look at the wireframe, we can see kind of what we're getting with the subdivision and triangulate and bevel business. Let's try just toggling off bevel to just look at it in the simplest form. And we're getting something like this. So just letting you know what it would be like if we were trying to solve this using alternative methods than the one that we showcased over the course of going throughout this model. So with that, I could truly wrap up this video.